Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the second episode of Comics on Comics, podcast featuring comics, talking about comics, mostly only reading comics. Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> Sometimes we might read something else. I'm Max. I'm Oscar. And is... it's flooding. It is flooding. And my chair doesn't go any lower. <laughs> yeah, Oscar's chair does not go any lower. <laughs> Who's to say which is worse? Yeah. It's terrible. Um, it's like, really bad. In Brooklyn, there's so much water. We're lucky. We're on like the third floor of our apartment building. Yeah, and it, we're not flooding at all. We're, we're good. But the apartment we basically almost lived in, we would have been underwater right now. Yeah, it was a basement. It was just a really a basement. And the building next door, we got a TikTok <laughs> of a tour of the basement apartment. Oh, yeah. Like next door. They're f- screwed. But anyways, if you're living in New York and you're listening to this, and it's still somehow flooding when it <laughs> comes out... <laughs> I'm really sorry. Well, I'm not that sorry because it's happening to me, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, we just established it's not. Well, true. <laughs> okay. But I do think a general life update is in order. We finished mm-hmm. Ancient Apocalypse by yeah. Graham Hancock. We did, and uh, I think that Oscar wants to tell you that I'm a man in the show. I want to tell you two things. <laughs> the ending was so bad. The whole point of the show is Graham Hancock convincing you there was an ancient society, and at the end he's just like... He loses us. I don't know, though. He's like, until mainstream academia can accept this, don't hold your horses. Yeah. What the fuck, Graham Hancock? There was this episode. Was he in, like, Mexico? I don't remember. I don't know. There was a man who was, like, the expert on whatever site Graham Hancock was looking at. And white guy, by the way, and he was not. He <laughs> was not in a white country. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was ugly. I don't know. He was ugly. He was not conventionally attractive. No. Which is fine. His name was Marco, but the producers of the show definitely caught on to the fact that he was not that pretty because there was a, like, ten-minute stretch where Graham Hancock was interviewing him, and they would only shoot him from behind or when he was backlit, so you couldn't see his face. Like, they would cut away to coverage of just, like, the grass. Yeah. It was really funny. It was really... They would not show his face. It was for, like, ten minutes. Yeah. (laughs) By the way, Graham Hancock, if anyone's curious if they watched the first episode, he's not British. (laughs) It's the craziest thing ever! (laughs) He tries to make you think he's British. He really wants you to think he's British. Which, by the way, I get why. I would believe him more if he's British. Archaeology has to be British. <laughs> They're the ones that fucked over everyone and buried it all. Archaeology is like the colonization of the past. Yeah. Who else would do it? No <laughs> one else. Yeah. Who else would do it? He's subversive, by the way. Because oh. <laughs> he's American. And he's progressive. He is. Every time he's like, guys, climate change is bad. Yeah. He's also like, this was lost to history. Whose fault is that? Yeah. He's like, I hate colonization. <laughs> anyway, this week we're bringing in, we're reading yeah. a book that I brought. It is called... I... Oh. <laughs> it's called... I married my best friend to shut my parents up. I think we're just going to call it I married my best friend. What's it called in the original Japanese, Oscar? (laughs) Couldn't tell you. This is a manga that is four chapters long, so I would say it's probably just worth reading it before you watch Yeah, I read it in like 20 minutes eating lunch. You don't have to, though. But, like, you you totally could. There's not really that much story, though. There's one story. Yeah, like, yeah. we're not gonna, like, be worried about spoiling it. Y- yeah. Because it just happens. Like, the first page establishes what's happening. Yeah. Really good, though. I mean, yeah. Did you I enjoy it? it? I thought it was very cute. It's adorable. It's really cute. Yeah. I- some of the art was, um... There's nudity. Borderlining weird stuff. But yeah, but besides that, it was pretty adorable. So I think we should do what we did last time, where you just... What was this comic about? Let's recap. I and I think you should that's recap. the perfect thing. What was this about? What was this about? I totally stole that from another show I watched. I didn't doubt it. it it's not even, like, something <laughs> worth stealing. It's just yeah. so obvious. I thought this this book was about... I just almost said this podcast. I thought this book was about a girl who... I just turned to a almost sex scene. A girl. Yeah, clothes on. Sure. <laughs> a girl who uh, is under a lot of pressure from her parents to succeed in life in a very traditional way. And rather than doing that, instead of finding a boyfriend, pretends to marry her best friend, who is gay and has had a crush on her since middle school, mm. I guess, to, like, spite her parents. But then they fall in love. It's really cute. It's really cute. And um, they cook for each other a lot. Mm-hmm. It's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. There's also a chapter where they're in school for some reason. Well, also, there's a weird... There's a jealousy thing. Yeah, yeah but that was, like, for, like, three pages. Yeah. And they didn't have it. Yeah, but it was cute because she cared so much. Yeah, she really did care she a lot. She really cared a lot. It was really cute. And then there's chapter 3.5, the bonus chapter at the end. I don't think we're going to be talking about that very much. It wasn't good. It's just sort of tacked on. It's not great. Then there's also the the real end chapter where um it kind of just turns into porn. I did not read that. That was not online. Okay, well... They just have sex. 
will it end before they have sex? But she says, I've never handled such big ones before. Oh, no, no, that, that was online. Oh, uh, well, it's presented in the book after the sports uh, thing. I mean, nudity is very common in manga. Yeah, that's true. Like, way more than in American comics. Like, manga made for, like, young boys has nudity in it. It's crazy. Very common. Dude, what? the manga I just bought, the cover is a naked woman. Ayako? Ayako, yeah. Really good. It's right there. That's why, that's why I went... I went like this for good reason. My computer is sitting on top of it. Yeah. This um, setup to... is jerry-rigged. <laughs> Jerry's Seinfeld ring. Yeah. It's almost as if we are Seinfeld. It's almost as if... Almost. We're... Almost. <laughs> I love that saying. Because you can say whatever you want. Anything is almost. Almost is it. It's almost Seinfeld. Yeah. It would be Seinfeld if um I was bald. 5-4. But I don't think you're George. Well... Oscar's phone is blowing up. So let's talk about the comic. Okay. I have some notes. You have some notes. I have internal notes. I read this an hour ago. Cool. I was eating Trader Joe's samosas. <laughs> Whoa. I have a lot of notes. I really like this. I think one thing we should talk about is... Um, I'm just going to come right on and say it. This author, mm -hmm. whose name is... Kodama Naoko. Kodama Naoko, yeah. It is a woman. She writes Yuri manga. If you don't know what that means, it's just lesbian porn. She makes a lot of lesbian porn. This is not lesbian porn, and not everything she writes is lesbian porn. But I feel like it's still Yuri. I, I don't know how that works. I, I don't really, know how it I, works. I, I, she is a Yuri author. Right. Right. These are, this is still essentially, I mean, it's a lesbian book. But it's not porn. No. Very clearly not porn. Yeah. <laughs> really I'm sure people could get off to it. <laughs> well, you could say that about anything. More so about this! <laughs> but yeah, I was trying to do research about the author, because last week we were talking about James Tynion yeah. and Cole Turner, and we were like, oh, Cole Turner's literally just him. Mm -hmm. We don't have that with us. Yeah, like, like you don't know, right? Kodama Nalco is a pseudonym. We don't know who this person is. The only way we have to interact with manga authors is through interviews and their work. Why do they do that? Very glad you asked this. Very recently, Chapter 236 of Jujutsu Kaisen came out. Mm -hmm. It was very controversial. People really didn't like it. On Twitter... Did the entire world end? No. Just a character everyone really likes died. On Twitter, someone tweeted at, I believe it was, like, ISIS, and be like, do you do hits in Japan? I know someone I want you to kill. Really funny. Uh, yeah. So, people really get mad at mangakas. It's sort of just like a layer of protection, most of them. Like, there's some exceptions, right? Like, we all know Hirohiko Araki, yeah. the guy who made JoJo's. Very public figure. But he is the exception, not the rule. It's really interesting, because, like, for example, the Spider-Man writer for a few years ago, he had an NYPD, like, protection service 24-7 yeah. around the clock. They don't hide their identities, they just get fucked over. Yeah. But so, I guess it's way smarter to yeah. change your name. So, like, the guy who writes Jujutsu Kaisen interacts with fans every week because mm -hmm. he releases... Well, you don't actually know. They release a... Oh, you really don't know. You really don't know. They talk to their fans through weekly publishings on yeah. chapter notes that are usually very short, and they're spoken by an avatar, which is a cat with one eye. Do you think it's a guy or a girl? I don't know. I think it's a guy because of a lot of, like, circumstantial evidence. Right. But you just don't know. That's interesting. I mean, this was by a girl. You, she has said she is a girl. If this was by a man, it would be really weird. It'd be really weird. But anyway, so I tried to look for interviews with Kodama Naoko, right. who, which exist, but she doesn't discuss this. She discusses um, another work she made, which was far more popular, which is porn. Um, haven't read it. We can't really be like, oh, Morimoto is literally right. her, you know? Yeah, because yeah. it's not like the most specific story, anyways. Yeah, like it's fairly relatable. So we to can't most we can't be like, oh, yeah, we can't look at this interview with James no. Tenyan. Another thing that I think is interesting, it's like there's this law that people are really worried about, where mangakas are being forced to somewhat abandon their pseudonyms in October. I, I don't think anything's gonna happen. With a law? Yeah, why? why? I, I, I don't, don't know, know why. Really fuck. I I really don't know why. <laughs> The pseudonym thing is really deep. Mangakas are technically contractors for their publishers, and they sign yeah. on the checks it says their pseudonym. Yeah. Like, even the companies don't know their real name. Right. So I, the law is just making it so the checks are in their real name, I'm pretty sure. Uh, like, I, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it's, probably, it's literally probably a banking issue, because if you have a... Because yeah. you could be abused by your work. Well, it's not just that. You could also just, like, not pay your taxes. Yeah. And yeah. also, like... Uh, yeah, it's not great. Everyone's freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god, we're gonna know who Gigi really is. And it's like... I don't think so. That's interesting, though, because I guess cons aren't really a thing there, right? Like, what do you mean? Like Comic-Con. Oh. Well, actually, some of them do make public appearances. The mangaka of Beastars is, um, I, for I forget her name, but she does make public appearances. She just wears a mask. Very robust mask. Like, she okay. draws her avatar as a chicken, and she wears a chicken mask. Oh, my God. Around. I see. Actually, she recently got married and posted a photo of herself in her wedding dress wearing the chicken mask. Did she get married to a man or a woman? I, I believe a man. Liberals triggered. 
<laughs> Anyways, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I said the last thing. I really enjoyed the art style. I liked the backgrounds a mm. lot. Like sometimes the pages were just um, basically like the city. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really liked it. Comics don't do that. I American comics? Com- they do it sometimes. Do they not do like establishing shots? They do, but they don't really have, to have the time all the time. Mm. Manga does establishing shots all the time. I mean, Western comics have them, but not just for like. No, it's like like right here, like just for it fun. Always happens. I don't know. It's like. Something in the style they're always doing. Maybe it's because Western comics always have fully rendered backgrounds. I don't know. It just looked really cute. Yeah, it is. It's a really cute. I don't know how to express this. This was just an adorable comic. I actually had a question for you. Okay, what's up? Do you know what this means? There was a symbol. Do you? What does this mean? This appeared a few times. She didn't say anything. It's just like. But what does this symbolize? She's just sad. Okay. That's she's just... not saying anything, but she's just sad. So that's interesting to yeah. me. That text box could contain not. Text. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. What is that about? You? That happens actually a lot in JoJo's, and especially in the later par- later parts when Araki wants to tell you that a character is saying something flamboyantly. Mm. He'll put like a tilde around the words that they're saying. That makes sense. Yeah. And um, he puts a lot of words in quotes that don't need to be in quotes. It's like it's interesting. The the style. Do they letter their own books usually? No, I think the translators do that. Yeah. Like the publishing companies that right. translate it. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's interesting. She's such an interesting character. Yeah, she's really interesting. Kind of an asshole. Not very nice. A lot of manga MCs, just bad What's people. Main character. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I just. I don't. I'm not chronically online. Oh, okay. People might think I'm very online. I'm not online enough to know these things. Okay. What? I wasn't saying you're chronically online. No, but you're right. Yeah. <laughs> like I just don't know enough things. I uh. Main character. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, they're just bad people. She's fine, I guess. I have, I have a few things that I think are really interesting okay. to analyze. I think even though this story is so short, I think it really. It's not that short. No, it's pretty short. Yeah, pretty short. Um, why did you do that? I don't know. I, I thought don't... you were insulting it. I really liked it. <laughs> no, I'm not insulting. I bought it. It's really good. You're gonna keep it. Yeah. Cool. Well, who's? I bought it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, anyway, I think it does a very good job at illustrating some of the connections between sexual expression and capitalism. Yeah, it's very much so about that. It's very much about capitalism. Because it's about how, like, the entire point of even getting married is basically a capitalist idea. Because, like, you don't love someone more when you put a ring on them. But you can tell people you're married, and then your job can know you're married. Well, I think there's a lot of things going on. She wasn't able to express or her interest in other women mm-hmm. because she was so caught up in being this normal person for a capitalist structure. Right, yeah. yeah. Which is really interesting. And it shows you how she becomes disillusioned from her job by accepting happiness. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't quit or anything at the end, I don't think. But she has a different relationship Yeah, to but her. her inner monologue is like, she doesn't really want to be there anymore. Yeah. She's just kind of like showing up, which is... So fine. It, the manga has a very positive outlook about that. They think it's way better yeah. that she's not staying all these late nights. She's yeah. embracing the parts of life that make life beautiful. She's becoming happier and happier. Yeah. And also there's this like really small sequence where she overhears, overhears her boss discussing not promoting her because she's a woman. Mm-hmm. And she's like going to have a kid or something. Yeah. And it's like, that's a very traditional idea, obviously. Sure. That girls have to have kids. But coming out yeah. and being a lesbian yeah. for to herself gives her the confidence yeah. to stand up to him. Exactly. And become more su- successful in right. her work environment. Not right? that lesbians can't have babies. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what it is. Yeah. It's more about her inner... Exactly. Life. No, I know. I know. Yeah. I was just clarifying in case there's any... You know there's people listening. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like being true to herself. Yeah, helps her. I, and again, I don't think it helps her in her career. No, not I at think all. it helps her in her personal goals. Right. Factually, it helps her career because she gets the promotion. Yeah. But it's more about her and her means of living and being happy. Which it also says a lot about how like the office functions, right? Because mm-hmm. like they don't want you to be your own person. They want you to be an employee of whatever company you're an employee of. So like when she was working those late hours, it was basically impossible for her to find herself. Right. Because she went to work. Fell asleep and then went back to work. Yeah, but by by overly committing to yeah. that, she ultimately hurt yeah. her. Yeah. It's a lot deeper than it would seem on the surface. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I yeah. thought it had a very nuanced take between the relationship between sexual expression and being a individual under capitalist rule. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like her wife has no relation to capitalism, no. essentially. Her wife doesn't have a job and then, and then draws she, shit. Yeah, when she does, it's freelance. Like, if anything, her wife is the insert for Kodama. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, if anyone is. Because she's probably a lesbian. 
It'd be really weird if she wrote this and she's not. What do you think about that, actually? It's a very interesting conversation topic. I don't care. I don't care either, but I do think sometimes with stories this, this much, it's a little weird. I might, it, like, it's a little weird, but, like, what's really the problem? There's no problem. I guess it's in my head, like, what compels you to write that? Well, it's also, like, how did you do so well? Yeah, like, what co- what compelled you to, why were you sitting there and you're like, oh, I'll write a lesbian love story. Like, yeah. why? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know. I, I can't ask her. You cannot ask I can't. her. Do you think she's a lesbian, the main character, Maury? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I don't think she's a lesbian. I think she's bisexual, if anything. No, no, no. Not even that. I think the manga makes it very clear that, like, before this happened, there was nothing innate about her that had an attraction to other right. women. Yeah, she had boyfriends. Yeah. She just, like, got tired of them. She was not really, like, a person looking for a man or a person looking for a woman. She yeah. was just someone looking for freedom of expression. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting that she's not necessarily just, like, a lesbian. Like, Hannah is... Clearly a lesbian. She says she is many yeah. times. And, and talks about boobs. But the way Hannah loves Morimoto is very different than the way Morimoto loves Hannah. Yeah, it yeah. also gets to the interesting distinction between sexual attraction and romantic attraction. Mm-hmm. Because, like, Morimoto's, like, in love with Hannah. Yeah. Anna? Hannah. I'm, she's Probably not, Hannah. She's not a... Yeah, she's not a Jew. <laughs> Our worldview is very... We're, we're looking for the keyhole of Judaism. Yeah. Yeah. But... Morimoto's clearly in love with her, mm-hmm. but there's not, like, any discussion of actual physical attractive like, it's like elements. Hana is physically attracted to her, which which creates romantic feelings. Yeah. And Morimoto is romantically attracted to her, which creates, eventually, these physical feelings. So but, Assumed. They don't really confirm it. But she she's open to exploring it. Yeah, she's is, open to figuring it out. Yeah. Which is also a great place to end the book. Yeah. Because, like, you spend so much time with them getting to know their relationship and stuff. I feel like it'd be kind of weird if you, like, saw the, like, sex stuff. I don't know. It would have been weird. I'd be uncomfortable. Because, like, you spend so much time getting to know them almost in, like, their childish state of, mm-hmm. like, pre-relationship. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to know what's going on there. I don't no, need to know that. I, I totally get that. Yeah. It's like, she's just not a lesbian. No. She's just she a woman in love with another woman. Which, yeah. Like, I think it's interesting. It's it's how it understands sexuality. Because nowadays, liberals... Nowadays, it's just, like, people, like, putting labels on things. Yeah, labels. I mean, labels can be good, though. They comfort some people. Of course. And they also give us vocabulary to fight for what we want. Yeah. They're overall a good thing. Dude, we really went from a man with a husband to a woman with a wife. Mm-hmm. You picked it. We're two for two right now. We gotta keep this up. I don't think it would be that challenging. It really wouldn't be. <laughs> That's another thing we can always talk about. Comics as a medium, which always seem to un- represent, like, the underrepresented. Not always. Not oh, well, dude. More often than other mediums. I mean, like, there's so many just, like, political comics. Yeah. That are, like, in newspapers and stuff. Yeah. What is that guy? Ben Garrison? Mm-hmm. Those are comics. They count. They do. But, like, once we get to this form of comic where it's, like, chapters and stuff, most of them are, I think, pretty progressive. Although there's this interesting thing going on in Japan, actually, where... A lot of manga guys are very conservative. Well, conservative for... What does conservative for Japan mean? I don't know. No, like conservative for American standards. Oh, okay. Like, like a lot of mainstream manga guys kind of don't like gay people. Oh, yeah. Kind of are not for certain social programs that we would consider to be, like, like progressive. Progressive. Right. And sometimes they're a little bit pro-imperialist because that happens in Japan a lot. So it's... And um, obviously the history of manga is so inter with imperialism. Right. So that's really interesting. So a lot of them actually end up being very conservative. Right. Not this one. No. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it happens. But Western comics, I'm trying really hard to not get my foot on the camera, but I want to have my legs crossed. <laughs> don't want to give the people feet images. Not for free. Not really for money either. I don't, I'm not saying you want to, but if you're going to have to. <laughs> gotta make a living. Yeah. Gotta pay rent. I got a TikTok of someone that does that. TikTok of someone who does what? There's, you know, those like interview on the street TikToks where it's like, what do you, <laughs> where it's like, what do you do for a living? Are you serious? Yeah, they're like, they're like, what do you do for a living? And she goes, oh, I sell pictures of my feet. And the guy's like, are you joking? And she's like, no, it's worked so far. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. The only problem with that is like, it's gonna stop working. Eventually. No, it's like, what do you put on your resume well, when you, you want to get a, a real yeah, job? That's the problem. What are you gonna do? I don't know, but presumably. You might be making so much that you don't have to work ever again. I don't know. You'd have to make a lot of money for that to be the case. I don't know. Plus, even then, if, like, we try to apply for an apartment with just, like, a gross sum of cash and no income, they would deny us. Yeah. Because they, they want income. Because it's... We would be, like, the mafia. <laughs> I don't think that's a lie. For feet. We got you know how there's the Italian mafia, the Jewish mafia? Right. There's the foot mafia. The Jewish mafia? That's a thing. Really? Mm-hmm. Don't know anything about that. What, what is this in the corner? 
What? What? What is that? My shoulder? No. No. What is that? Oh my god! It's your leg. Oh my god! I tried to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> We're so dumb. Yeah, we um lost a lot of momentum here. We stopped talking with the comic. Okay. Why um, is your phone blowing up? I, I don't know. Um, we've we've talked about a lot of my notes. Wait. I'm not allowed to read Oscar Hunt. No, you're not allowed to. No. I started uh, the new Captain America run, not the the one that started last week. Like not the J. Michael Straczynski run, the uh, Lansing run. I think is who it's by. Really good. I don't know how Marvel let them do that. J- Wait, what was his name? It's really good. I think his last name's Lansing. I don't know. It's by two people. I don't remember their names. For know. some reason, I thought you said Jan Michael Vincent, which is I don't know who that is. Rick and Morty thing. No, J. Michael Straczynski is the current writer as of like two weeks ago. I don't like Rick and Morty. That one joke, really good. I watched the first five minutes of the first episode in like middle school or whatever, and I was like, this is gross. And yeah. Never seen it. There's like this joke show, like movie they come up with, which is just like there's a bunch of like district, like it's the future, it's dystopian. There's a bunch of different districts, and the entire police force is made up of one guy, <laughs> Jan Michael Vincent, and he has a bunch of clones. That's really the like in the trailer. They're like, I need eight Jan Michael Vincents, and it's really funny. I hate that show. I've never seen it. Really bad show. I like Community a lot. I think Community's. Kind of weird, though. Yeah, but I think it's good. Weird. Yeah. I really love that show. It's good, but it's also, like, it tries to be, like, this anti-sitcom, but it also wants to get away with doing all the sitcom things. Unironically. I think that's part of it on purpose, but a lot of people are, have your take. I don't know. I feel like it's doing all that literally on purpose. I know, but, like, that's... At one point, do we get enough right. irony? I just think that it people think it cares way more than it does. No, I, I know, but I like it. Sometimes I yeah. like shows that care. There's discourse on Twitter and about community. Really? People are like, community has irreparably broken our sense of humor. And I'm like, that's not true. You're dumb. That's, like, you're being stupid. That's just not true. They're like, the fact that Dan Harmon is successful is the reason why blockbusters have bad comedy now. No. No, most people like it, first of all. You can't call it bad because the fact is that most people like it. Like, Rick and Morty's really popular. It is very popular. Like, it's really popular. Hate the player, not the game. Yeah. No, hate really... the... Hate the... Did I say it backwards? I don't know. I feel like I said it right, but it doesn't make any sense when you say it like that. You should really be hating the game. Yeah, because the game is capitalism. Yeah. Is it not? Is no, that not no, what we're talking about? I was just thinking, like, I'm pretty sure I said the quote right. <laughs> hate the player, not the game. No, but... Don't the, hate the player, hate Don't the hate game. the player, hate the game. I yeah, figured it that's out. That's what it is, right? Yeah. It's not Dan Harmon's fault that he got successful using this style of comedy. I do think about that a lot. Comedy and its evolution, and culture and its evolution is ultimately, to, to a certain exto- extent, like when the population gets big enough, somewhat inevitable. Like, there was gonna be somebody with Dan Harmon's exact sense of humor. Yeah. It was inevitable. It's just like the evolution of like modernism and like postmodernism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and stuff. exactly. I just think that um, if you think about art history, which I don't like, because it's boring. Every few decades, art gets more and more self-reflective about what it means to be an artist, because we get a more scientific understanding of the world, right? Mm-hmm. So we don't have to understand the world through art as much. Well, that, that, that's not the point I was making. Oh. The point I was making is, like, America, we have 300 million people. Mm-hmm. It was inevitable that there was going to be one guy who was oh. going to make something like Rick and Morty. You're making a significantly less um, complex point than I was. It's Well, no, it's not that it's less complex. It's just different. It's completely different. What yeah. the hell are you what, <laughs> such an asshole? No, but like I'm not wrong. No, you're you not can't wrong. be mad at Dan Harmon because no. someone else just would have done it if he didn't do it. Yeah, and like just because you don't like quips in Marvel movies, most people like them. I think most people are getting tired of them by now. Sure. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure it's very clear that that the just didn't come from community. No, but people are like, they always hire Rick and Morty writers. And I'm like, yeah, it's because they're, like, good at it. Like, they can turn around scripts and like, hey, you know what they're doing right now? I have two hours ago. Your mom. I would hope not. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> they are looking for writers for the X-Men movie. Call me. I, I could do it. I have a pitch. You want to hear my X-Men movie pitch? Okay. Don't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Make it a TV show. Well, they're never going to hire you now. <laughs> Don't do it. Just do what I did. It's not going to go well. You're going to fuck it up. Someone's going to call you racist, and you're probably going to be racist. Do you know how hard it is to make an X-Men movie? Anyways. Oh, my God. Lesbians. Lesbians. Oh, yeah. So do you want to talk about the X? Because I was kind of confused there, honestly. It's very confusing. They, like, called someone and was like, why are you so suspicious? Are you dating someone again? And then Hannah, Hannah goes to the bar, gets drunk, and then Marimoto just picks her up and it's over, right? So it's not confusing. It's just kind of stupid. It's just kind of stupid. Okay. It was like... The the ex wanted to get back with Hana. 
And it kind of seems like the ex just wants to fuck her. I don't think the ex has any interest in going beyond that. But she says no. Right. She's in love with Morimoto. Yeah. Like, really sweet. Yeah. I um I want to talk about the name of the comic a little bit. I married my best friend to shut my parents up. Really dumb name. Really stupid name. Really stupid name. When Oscar sent it to me, I was like, okay, I'll read it, but um, why is it called that? Yeah, <laughs> really dumb name. And a lot of mangas have really dumb names that well, are way too long. My question always is, is it because it just sounds better in Japanese? I looked into it. That is not the reason. Oh. So before I we go into this, I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. When you're like in a comic store, mm-hmm. How do you decide what comic to pick up? Or how do you think the average person does it? They see a character or a cover that's cool and they buy it. Exactly. Yeah. That's not really a thing with mangas because they're not looking for a character they think is cool because there's not right. that many recurring characters. Right. Manga is, I'm sorry, but way more popular in Japan than comics are here. Yeah. So they're only looking at the spy. So these mangakas, as like basically a self-marketing strategy, have been basically told by publishers and sort of just because it's a good idea to just like give you a really short plot synopsis in the name so you know what you're buying and you can just like instantly read it and be like I would want to read this or I would not want to read this and you can't just be like oh there's Iron Man I love Iron Man I'm going to buy an Iron Man comic that's not how manga works that's really stupid though that's the reason but what if they just made a good title and then people read the spot like the back it's so competitive when your manga doesn't have a reputation that you need to be able to hook a potential reader you, you can't hook them with just a name if, like, if One Piece wasn't popular, you go, One Piece, what's that? And you look at the next thing. Why do you novels don't have to do that? What do you mean? Like, non-comic books. It's like books. Probably because there's just less competition. In books? No, like, and when, when, you, when you're buying a regular book, you sort of know, like, oh, this is going to be, like, somewhat of a slow, intimate process I'm going to have with this book. Yeah, and I just When you're buying that. a comic book, you can just blaze through that in an hour. Right, you're supposed to just be done with it. That's true. Yeah. So it's like, they're, yeah. like, simple names just don't catch attention if you aren't a reputable author or a known series. Is that why they invented the light novel, by the way, which is just a book? What do you mean? I mean, light novels. I thought that was something different, but then I was informed recently, light novels are just books. Uh, the main reason, I think, no, most most light novels are, like, expansions on characters and existing media. It's just a book. drawing it. Yeah, but it's not, it's not to escape competition. Okay. No. Um, but yeah, that's why. So, like, it has a dumb name, but I, it's a it pretty works. good reason. I mean, it yeah. works. It, so it's like... It also can serve storytelling purposes, right? Because they don't have to spend time setting up the story, because I know what it's about. It's true. The first, like, within the first, like, three pages, she marries. So, like, the way I found this, like, the way I found this was, like... Oscar just looked up, oh, book about someone marrying uh, her parents to annoy... Marry her parents? (laughs) I was like, I want to read some, like, gay manga. And mm-hmm. someone's like, this one, I married my best friend to show my parents on. And you're like, oh, that's really a good, good title. And I was like, that seems like a good plot. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to make recommendations. It worked on me. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's a, true. It's a really dumb name. It's a really dumb name. But it works. It works. And I think it's, it's really point. interesting. Mm-hmm. Because the market is so different here than yeah. it is there. You know? Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Mm. It's a little less difficult for me to read this title, knowing why it's called this. Let me ask you another question. Mm-hmm. How come there's no lines? What do you mean? Like, I figured it out, but with the text, like, the speech bubbles, right? What do you mean, no lines? I mean, sometimes there are, but a lot of the time, they're just kind of floating oh, there. pointing to the characters? Yeah, you, like, you don't technically know who's saying it. Oh, because okay. yeah, you don't really need to. It's usually pretty clear. I guess that's true. I know, it's just interesting. And I think manga really likes doing this thing. Sorry. It's just a drawing. They love doing just drawings of, like, one person mm-hmm. with, with an unspecified text bubble, because it just makes it feel more like a moment. Yeah. The... Drawing the line to the character, I don't know, it's like, it makes this feel less cohesive as one yeah. image, right? Because, like, not every character gets that treatment. No, you know? that's what I was saying. Like, the like the side characters usually mm-hmm. get a line. A lot of times you can just tell who's saying it, because yeah, these true. characters are so different. Yeah. Yeah. Her mom, such an asshole. Such an asshole. I mean, her dad's words. Yeah, but you don't see him. They don't dwell on that. They don't dwell on any of the men. All the men are really bad people in this book, but they... Her co-worker's nice. Assumes she has a boyfriend because she he doesn't know. I don't think he's that nice. He expects his girlfriend to just want to be married and then serve him. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's not, like, bad to her, but he's... No, like, he's not bad to her, but yeah. his expectation is, why doesn't she want to get married and then cook me dinner every day? Yeah. <laughs> he's so transparently a... Uh, Man. No, like a puppet for, like, yeah. what... Like, yeah. status quo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Really dumb, by the way. Status quo, it's dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if she's bad at cooking? I'm... Way better at cooking than my girlfriend. I'm way better at cooking than my girlfriend. I know that. I, li- I live with Oscar's girlfriend. You keep saying it like that. What? Dude, you keep saying, I live with Oscar's girlfriend, as if I do not also live with my girlfriend. I don't think that's how I'm saying it. That is how you're saying it. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name. Our editor? Mm-hmm. 
was telling me. Really? That it sounded like that. Okay, well, our editor should get over it. We're not really paying them to comment. We're not really paying them to do anything because no. we're not paying them. No, our editor's a good friend of ours. That's why I'm insulting them. Don't worry about it. What do you guys think about the name, by the way? Because we really like the name, but obviously, like, if you think it's stupid... <sighs> it cares about, It matters much more what you think. Yeah, because you have to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to... You have to watch it. have to watch it. There's no choice here. No. I'm coming to your house... Yeah. I have a gun. Mm -hmm. I know where you live. Legally purchased. Anyway, lesbians. Let's talk about the bonus chapter. Okay. Did not like it. It was just Hana talking about how much she loves Morimoto in middle school. But, like, it was really kind of confusing. It was also way more, like, porny than the other one. That's why I didn't like it. Yeah. Because they were in middle school, and then they made the middle school chapter way more porny. Yeah. I didn't get that. Very backwards. It was really weird. There's, like, there's, there's a scene where she gives her, like, Hana gives Morimoto a massage, and it's really weird. Yeah. But it's drawn, um, yeah. very specifically. I feel like Kodama was like, they're together, I can get away with this now. But it's like... They weren't. Yeah. They weren't. Yeah. For so long. What so this bonus chapter is a common thing. Yeah, in shorter mangas. So like, isn't it just a chapter? That's so I just read... Well, it's categorized as chapter 3.5. Okay. So I just read a Junji Ito comic called Health, Hellstar Romina, which mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have you read at some point. It's six chapters long, mm -hmm. but then there's a chapter 6.5, which is a different story. I guess I don't get the point of that. It's what? just a one-chapter story that was it going to get published on its own, so I just tacked on the app. Oh, that makes sense. But the one in this book kind of doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know. I guess it saw, like, a, a bit of success, so they were like, write another chapter. They come out weekly, right? Yeah, but I don't know... I would assume this didn't. I don't... Yeah, I don't think this does. Because I would assume not established stuff can't get in a weekly publication. Well, that's not true. Like, Jujutsu Kaisen has been in weekly since week one. Yeah, but, but it's shown it. Yeah, but it's different. This yeah. is... This is just, like, a thing. Yeah. Also, I think maybe they wouldn't publish it as a volume if it didn't have four chapters. So she might have just written uh, an extra one. Yeah, that's true, because it would be significantly shorter. Yeah. And, like, it's very standard in, in Japan that volumes are four chapters every time. Yeah. Basically every time. What do you think we're going to read for next week? Do you want to do I bring in a book? Or do you want to bring another one? No, you do it. Should we announce it live on the pod? This is not binding. Of Isaac. But. Whoa. Yeah. Love that game. I think we will read, um, uh, what's popular right now? Secret Wars, but you can't read that. Why? It's not going to make any sense to you. Yeah. It's really good, though. You're going to like it. You're just not going to know what's happening. Well, then it's I won't be, really have much to talk about. Let us read The Sandman Volume 1 by Neil Gaiman. Yeah, you've probably read it if you're watching this podcast, honestly. I just have to say, Max, for the first week, gave me five chapters, and now for the second week, is giving me seven, mm -hmm. and I have given Max four. I am so much nicer than you. I don't think that that's true, <laughs> because I have to read what I give you, too. I, I read those. Yeah, but I have to read Sam. Like, I have to also read it every no, no, week. No. Okay, so... <laughs> oh, no, we can no, read no. something short. No, no, no. no, no, no. Do you want to read... I want to read Sam. Okay, it's really good. I'm sure. Really good. I've heard it is. The first volume is through the rest I was of really it. impressed with how good Department of Truth was. Yeah. Most of the shit I read is that good. And then there's, like, you know, fucking current X-Men. That's a story for another day. Then there's The Adventures of Dan Cooper, the comic. Dude, we watched... The Canadian comic. We watched a documentary... Well, a video essay. Video essay. I don't like calling them documentaries. It was the dumbest video essay ever. I tried to warn you. No, 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 no. They're all like that. It was really good, except there was two problems with it. First of all, in the middle, he was just like, stories are better than reality, while actively making a video about reality. It's like, why did you say that? Anyway, they had five suspects for Newbie Cooper, and it was so clearly one of them that it totally brought me out. Did you really not know the story? Before. I didn't know all of it. Like it's, I just knew like the general. Yeah, but the general is basically what the story is. I don't know. I, it doesn't interest me that much because he gave like, us a lot of detail. Some guy like robbed people. Okay, I don't know. I don't care. He's probably dead. Like I think he just died. No, we know who he was. I don't he know. was that guy. I think he died. Yeah, we. Yeah, in his dying words, I am Dan Cooper. No, I mean I don't think he was that guy. You really don't think it was that guy? I think he died jumping out of the plane. I think it makes no sense they wouldn't catch him. They always catch people that who steal money. The IRS is so good at what they do. They really care about their money. And also, it's way more likely that he just died and, like, a bear ate him or something. Yeah. But then how did the money get buried? I don't know. A bear did it. Huh? Yeah, a bear the did it. The same bear. The same bear. Yeah. They dig, also. They they love digging. They, what they do. You know what else they do? They climb. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, it's equally as interesting to me, honestly. <laughs> I had a good time watching it. Well, you did too, asshole. You just, you love complaining. You know what they call that? Kvetching. 
You know what people love about podcasts? What? That people just go on here and complain. Yeah. People love to listen to complain. No one's going to know what you just said, by the way. Kvetching? No one's going to know what that means. Shout out to my Jews in the audience. No one's going to know what that means. Is that, that's Yiddish, right? Yeah. Yeah. No one's going to know what that means. I feel like in context, it's pretty clear. Yeah, but you couldn't even say shout out to my Hebrew speakers. No one even says it. Uh, no. I mean, my parents say it a lot. But yes, that's mine. Yeah. Did I tell you about this girl who was in one of my classes, um, who was like, oh, I speak Yiddish. And I was like, what do you mean you speak Yiddish? No, you don't. And she was like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, how? And she's like, well, I speak German. And I was like, ah, so what are you talking about? And she was like, it's very similar. And I'm like, sure. Sure, but, but you don't speak Yiddish. That's People like saying, don't speak Yiddish. That's like, I speak Spanish, so I speak fucking Portuguese. Really stupid. It's just not true. It made me really upset. Should we wrap it up? Oh, yeah, sure. Do we want to do our quirk where we rock, paper, uh-huh. scissors for hitting stop record? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you remember? Yeah. None of this best two out of three shit, though. No best two out of three. No and. Yeah. No, no shoot. Okay. No Rochambeau. Rock. Wait, no shoot? Just do, do rock, rock, paper, shit. Crap. Dude, some people call it Rochambeau. Do you know that? I've only lived in New York. Ever in my whole life. It wasn't like they call. What the fuck? Are you, what does that mean? It must be a regional thing. They've never called that, no. that where I've lived. No one's ever called it that to me. I just know about it. I don't know about that. I'm Remember? way more worldly than you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rock, paper, scissors. Whoa. Whoa. How did you know? I don't know. You, you, that was precise. Add one to the spreadsheet. Bye. Bye. Wait, wait, wait. You forgot to plug everything. Follow us on YouTube. Um, also, by the time this goes out, we're going to hopefully have our Apple Podcasts, our Spotify, all those apps set up. So whatever you listen to podcasts too like you're welcome to subscribe there although oh, we always recommend you watch it's probably gonna be more fun if you watch it mm-hmm. also um let us know how the audio sounds because we're experimenting like we're kind of curious if, if it's good or not eventually i think the utopian setup would be i have a mic and you have a mic yeah right. but like if this is like basically unlistenable say something our editor will tell us no he won't i just revealed his gender um, we don't even know that much about Gigi Akutami. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you could rate the podcast, if you were listening to it audio, if you review it, it really boosts numbers for whatever reason. So that'd be helpful. And tweet about it if you like it. I'll retweet you. We'll have a Twitter account too by the time this comes out. Whoa. I've never had a Twitter account before. This will be my first one. That's crazy. Actually, um, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X. You're joining Twitter so late that you can't join Twitter. Also, if you want to email us for some reason, comics aren't comics. N O one at gmail.com because we're the number one comics on comics podcast. We're the number one podcast with the name Comics on Comics. Yeah. Bye.